painted faces, waving rainbow flags, carrying balloons. That's how the thousands of Israelis express themselves at Jerusalem's Pride Parade. We wouldn't have had to march if this parade hadn't required security, snipers and undercover policemen. And we wouldn't have had to march if homo wasn't used as a curse in schools, but rather a simple self-identification. Whenever I am in Jerusalem, I encounter homophobia. Only now on my way to the parade, I received some comments from people telling me that participating in this parade hurts them. The event took place for the first time on the 1st of June under Israel's new government. With critics of LGBTQ plus rights holding counter demonstrations, it was a high security occasion in the conservative city. On the 7th of June, hundreds of protesters gathered at the Glendale Unified School District headquarters in California. They shouted and scuffled. The reason? Deferring opinions. Should schools celebrate Pride Month? Should they have an LGBTQ plus inclusive curriculum? The split was palpable. Another protest erupted in another part of the world. On the 19th of June, the last day of Trans Pride Week in Istanbul, the Pride Parade was banned. Police closed off dozens of streets in the city center and some trans individuals were even detained. Despite the blockade, trans activists turned out to march against the discrimination. They chanted, we are trans, we are here, until the march was dispersed by the police. Across many countries, Pride Month celebrations are in full swing. But so is the rising backlash against LGBTQ plus rights. Widespread discrimination continues to shape LGBTQ plus people's lives in both subtle and significant ways. How are they fighting for equality in India and abroad? Let's explore. The Stonewall Inn, a gay bar in New York's Greenwich Village, became a flashpoint. On June 28, 1969, the LGBTQ plus community members clashed with police after they were harassed during a raid. Before and during the 1960s, there were several laws that prohibited public sexuality in the United States. There were restrictions on gays and lesbians meeting and moving around, and raids on their establishments were quite common. The thing about the Stonewall riots that's often overlooked is that um, it, it involved participation from all corners of the LGBTQ community, um, particularly trans women of color um, who were at the forefront of those riots. And as much as we think about the modern LGBTQ rights movement as being perhaps um, defined by the, the quest for same-sex marriage or um, to allow uh, gay and lesbian um, members of the armed services to serve openly, 
um, it, it has been just as much a battle for um, for the rights of transgender folks. And and in in some senses, uh, the country, the United States, has come a long way since 1969. The harassed gay customers at the Stonewall Inn took a stand, and a riot broke out. Soon, other gay men and women defended these customers and started throwing objects at policemen. Although the crowd dispersed at the time, the next night, more than 1,000 gay protesters from nearby areas assembled outside the inn. The riots are widely considered as the takeoff point of the gay liberation movement. Thus, every year, the month of June is celebrated with colorful parades to remember this watershed movement. Yet the status of LGBTQ plus rights remains murky. It's really important to look back to the Stonewall riots. Marsha P. Johnson was a black trans woman. Sylvia Rivera was a trans woman of Puerto Rican, Venezuelan descent. Stormy Delavery was unashamedly butch lesbian who was also a drag king. So when we look at the Stonewall riots, we need to remember how diverse the heroes of our movement really are. <laughs>